Hi everyone. In this video, I want to briefly go over um, experiment 10, um, maybe not super briefly, um, but in uh, several minutes. So basically what I want to do is go over the um, general idea of the experiment, and then after that go over some questions to consider for each part of the experiment. And I strongly re recommend that you can answer these questions before you come to lab. Now, in this video what you're not going to find is detailed step-by-step -step instructions for how to do everything. This is a lab practical, so um, it is important that you're prepared before you come to lab, but you also need to be somewhat independent. So the idea here is you're going to put into practice some things you've learned throughout the semester, and by doing so, um, hopefully it'll give you a better idea of, you know, how to perform an actual experiment without the step-by-step -step instructions um, that we've been giving in previous videos. So again, the idea here is just basically for you to, you know, grow and learn something and be able to apply something you've learned. So basically, I want to quickly go through this. Um, you can find a copy of what I'm going to read from or look at uh, below in the description of this video if you'd like to download it. And I, I suggest you do that and especially to answer the questions. The second thing that I'm going to go over. So uh, by way of uh, administrative stuff, this experiment requires two of each title, objective, variables, experimental procedure, and chemical hazards and waste sections. So basically you need two prelabs. One for the concentration of sodium carbonate solution and the second for the formation of calcium carbonate. So these are basically two things and we're going to talk about them in two parts and you need a prelab for each part because they're different even though you're going to use the concentration of the sodium carbonate solution that you do in part one to do the math for part two they're still completely separate so in part one you're going to use constant uh, conductivity to determine the concentration of an unknown sodium carbonate solution and this is somewhat similar to experiment two part three where you determined uh, the concentration of an unknown sodium chloride solution seawater solution using conductivity so you may want to review that experiment um, to give you an idea of how to perform this experiment. So in this case, we have an unknown and a calibration curve. And the truth is, it doesn't matter which part you do first. You can dilute your unknown first and measure its conductivity, or you can make the calibration curve first and then dilute your unknown and measure its conductivity and find its concentration. The unknown is going to be approximately 0.6 molar. And I'm going to talk about it first, but again, you don't have to do it first. So it's going to be approximately 0.6 molar. That is too concentrated to measure its conductivity directly. So the first thing you're going to want to do with the unknown before you measure its conductivity is take 5 milliliters of it using a graduated cylinder and put it into a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. Then fill to the line. This is a 20 times dilution, right? 5 and 100 is a 20-fold dilution. This will bring the conductivity of the unknown onto your calibration curve. So you do need to dilute it 20 times. Don't forget, because you dilute the unknown 20 times, when you measure its conductivity and then use the equation of the line to find its concentration, you're going to need to multiply that by 20 to find the concentration of the actual unknown, because you diluted it 20 times before you measured its conductivity. So dilute it 20 times, 5 milliliters in 100, dilute it up, um, bore it into a small beaker, and measure the conductivity. Again, you can do this first or second. For the calibration curve to actually find the concentration, once you have the conductivity, you're going to make four sodium carbonate solutions ranging in concentration from 0.01 to 0.04 molar, starting with solid sodium carbonate. Don't start with the unknown. You don't know the concentration of the unknown. So you're going to want to do the math to figure out how to make these solutions. So you're going to want to make the 0.04 molar and then dilute it down to 0.02. Uh, 0.03, 0.02, and 0.01. So you get four solutions in this range. You need at least 25 milliliters of each solution and a 50 milliliter beaker in order for the conductivity probe to measure the conductivity of the solution. That's how much volume you need, but we do suggest you make 30 milliliters. So when you're doing your dilutions, C1V1 equals C2V2, 30 milliliters is what you're going to want to make. You're going to measure the conductivity of each of these solutions um, using the 0 to 20,000 um, or the high range uh, micro siemens per centimeter calibration file. All right, and then you're going to generate a four point calibration curve where you're going to have conductivity and concentration. Then you're going to find the equation of the calibration curve as you've done before and use y equals mx plus b and the conductivity of the unknown to find the concentration of the unknown. So that is essentially what you are doing in part one. In part two, you're then going to use that concentration that you find for part one to determine the theoretical yield and the limiting reagent as you form calcium carbonate. So it's determining the theoretical yield and percent yield of calcium carbonate. 
and this is somewhat similar to experiment six where you formed magnesium carbonate. So in this case, you're going to react 20 milliliters of the unknown sodium carbonate solution, not the diluted one, not the one you diluted five and a hundred milliliters, the original one. Otherwise, you're not going to get enough uh, calcium carbonate uh, to uh, be able to do the to be able to actually isolate it and filter it and all this kind of stuff. And you're going to add this to 1.6 grams of solid calcium chloride. When you mix these two things together, calcium goes with carbonate and you end up with calcium carbonate, which is commonly referred to as chalk. You're going to collect the product, the precipitate, by vacuum filtration using an oven dried centered glass funnel. You're going to rinse the calcium carbonate with two 5 milliliter portions of acetone to dry it and use caution because acetone is flammable. Okay, so you don't want to um, start a fire here. Make sure there's no open flames in the lab. Oven dry the solid as best you can in the time you have available. Find the mass of the calcium carbonate and determine the theoretical and the percentage yields. The other thing you need to do is you need to clean the sintered glass funnel. Um, chalk is not soluble in much of anything, but it is soluble in hydrochloric acid. So clean it with one molar hydrochloric acid, then clean the funnel with water to get rid of the hydrochloric acid, then place the funnel back into the oven so it's ready to go for the next person. So you need an oven dried sintered glass funnel. It is your responsibility um, to make sure that the oven dried sintered glass funnel is ready to go for the students who are in the lab after you. So please do this step, um, it helps everybody out. So in this part, there are some questions to consider before lab. So these are the exact same parts that we talked about before. So you're gonna make a calibration curve, you're gonna determine the concentration of the sodium carbonate solution using the uh, calibration curve in the part one. Then you're gonna use that sodium carbonate solution uh, to mix with calcium chloride and isolate calcium carbonate. You're gonna determine the theoretical yield and the percentage yield of that reaction. Here are some questions, some things you should be able to do before you come to lab. So again, in the first part, this is somewhat similar to experiment two, part three, where you're going to use conductivity and concentration to determine the concentration of an unknown. So some questions to consider. How much unknown solution do you need to complete this experiment? This is for both parts. Well, it turns out you actually need 25 milliliters. Um, this one I'm actually answering for you. You need five for part one because you're going to put five mils in 100. And then you need 20 for part two to mix with your solid 1.6 grams of solid calcium chloride. Next, how do you make 100 milliliters of a 0.04 molar sodium carbonate solution? Make sure you have this calculated before lab. You should have an exact recipe for how to make this solution. How do you dilute the stock 0.04 molar to make 30 milliliters of 0 0.03, 0 0.02, and 0 0.01 molar sodium carbonate solutions? Do all these calculations before lab. Remember, you need 25 milliliters to have enough volume to measure the conductivity, so we suggest you make 30 milliliters. Here, you want to use C1V1 equals C2V2. Here, you're starting from a solid, so you have to think about grams to moles and then divide by the volume in liters. What size beaker should the solutions be placed in before the conductivity is measured? Remember, you need to use a small beaker because you need to have enough um, depth to get the conductivity probe in there. So 50 mil beaker is a good idea. How is the conductivity probe washed between solutions? How do you use Excel to make a calibration curve? What are you going to put on the x-axis? How about the y-axis? How is the equation of the line calculated? And this has gone over in experiment two, part three. How is the unknown treated before its conductivity is measured? So what are you going to do to that unknown? Remember, we talked about how you're going to dilute that unknown, refer above for doing that. And how do you use a calibration curve and dilution information for the unknown to calculate the concentration of the unknown? Again, experiment two, part three can help you with this because you did that exact same thing for sodium chloride. Part two. In part two, you're going to determine the theoretical yield and percent yield of the calcium carbonate. Um, and this is somewhat similar to experiment six where you made magnesium carbonate. So some questions to consider. How much of the unknown solution should be added to 1.6 grams of calcium chloride? We talked about this. It's 20 milliliters. When should you, should you measure the mass of the sintered glass funnel? Think about if you need to know the mass of that sintered glass funnel. And if you do, when should you measure it? What is the purpose of adding acetone? And how much is added? We talked about that earlier, and it's written above. How is the sintered glass funnel cleaned? What is it cleaned with after HCl and why? So it's obviously cleaned with HCl, and then it's cleaned with water to get rid of the HCl. Why is it a bad idea to place a, contam uh, a funnel contaminated with HCl back in the oven? Here I'll tell you the answer. HCl will go into the gas phase, and then the next person who opens the oven could potentially breathe in HCl. So please wash it with water after you wash it with HCl. What calculations should you perform at the end of the experiment? How are the calculations done in Excel? 
you could have example calculations and you could have an Excel file where all you have to do is type in your information for part one and part two, and it can do everything for you. We've given you several examples of that over the semester, but this time we're not going to go over in detail how to do that. So a final word uh, before I end this uh, relatively short video. You should have an Excel workbook ready to go before you attend the lab. We just talked about that. If you need help, we are here to help. Stop in at office hours and we'll answer questions. Um, when we say help, we can help you answer one or two of these questions, okay, if you have a question before lab. Now, we're not going to be like checking them off as we answer them, but we're, what we don't want you to do is come in to office hours having not looked at this experiment at all or thought about how you're going to do it and ask us to walk you through it. If you ask us to walk you through it, we're not going to be able to do that. But if you ask us specifically, you know, I'm, I have this part done, but I'm not sure how to do this, we can try to help you with that. And it's really important. Please come to lab prepared because limited assistance will be given by the TA during lab. So you have done these experiments before. So we're not trying to scare you. We just want to make sure that you're aware that you need to be prepared for lab. So I hope this video was helpful in getting prepared for lab. Again, you can um, get a copy of this uh, file that I'm reading from uh, right here uh, below in the description. And um, I hope you uh, enjoy this experiment and enjoy the rest of your weekend.